Hi, welcome to Philly Jazz Talks, everybody. I'm Suzanne Cloud, Project Director of the Philadelphia Jazz Legacy Project. And this evening, we're going to be talking to three people who really know their way around the award-winning charity JazzBridge, a nonprofit that helps professional jazz musicians living and working in the Philadelphia regions. But before, do, before we do that, it's important that you know that these jazz talks are brought to you by the Philadelphia Jazz Legacy Project. We're an organization whose mission is to establish a permanent jazz archive for Philadelphia area jazz artists and the community at large through recordings, video interviews, manuscripts, and material culture like photographs, programs, posters, anything that relates to Philly jazz and its history. I'd also like to thank the Philadelphia Cultural Fund and the City of Philadelphia for upping the arts funding, I just found out today, for partially sponsoring these talks. Without their help, these programs would not be possible. I also want to thank people who support us with their donations and to the attendees who have supported us throughout this series to see us discuss topics near and dear to our hearts. We appreciate it very much. To get a reminder of our events and other Philly Jazz Legacy work, please go to our website at phillyjazzhistory.org and sign up for our monthly newsletter. Now, to introduce tonight's guests, Lex, there's somebody in the waiting room you can let in if you would. Hey, okay. Um, tonight's guests, first on tap is Vice President Kevin Johnson, uh, he is Vice President of JazzBridge. He chairs the Technology Task Force for JazzBridge and is on the Executive Fundraising and Program Development Committees. Kevin has a passion for jazz and can often be seen throughout the region taking photos and videos for JazzBridge's social media outlets. A graduate of Fisk University and a member of Kappa Alpha Psi, Kevin is also Alumni Committee Membership Chairman uh, for Independence Region of the Big Brothers and Big Sisters. Um, Kim Tucker is Executive Director of JazzBridge. She's a Philadelphia-born jazz promoter, historian, and teacher. She's been with JazzBridge since its inception, replacing her mother, jazz producer Sue Ford on the board after her mother's death. Later, as Program Director, Tucker was responsible for Jazz Bridges Neighborhood Concerts and its music partnerships. She holds an associate degree from Harcum College and a bachelor's degree in psychology from Chestnut Hill College. Lastly, but not leastly, Wendy Simon, singer, singer and educator, and one of the primary founders of Jazz Bridge in the beginning, along with myself in 2004, was integral to the early success of JazzBridge, putting in long hours to build the organization into the powerhouse that it became and is. Wendy holds a bachelor's degree from Arcadia University and in addition to appearing at local clubs, she's been an in-demand vocal coach for some of the most important singers in the city. We have quite a panel here tonight. Welcome all of you. So let's go. First, Wendy, I'd like to talk to you Okay. And uh, I'd like to, uh, why don't you give us a description on, on how, you know, um, Jasper started? got started. Yeah. Well, in um, 2004, um, Suzanne contacted me because her mentor, uh, fa fabulous uh, piano player, um, Eddie Green, had uh, pancreatic cancer. And she was trying to help him, you know, get through it and get some services. But unfortunately, there was nothing. She couldn't find anything. And she contacted me and she said, I think we should really start an organization that's going to help musicians, jazz musicians who are in crisis. And um, it came out of her relationship with uh, Eddie. And, um, and so um, she called me and we had, you know, we talked about who we should have meetings with. And I think, wasn't the first meeting that we had, um, wasn't it at um, um, the place on... Uh, TGI Fridays. Oh. No, oh, no. The first one you and me had was at TGI uh, TGI Fridays. Fridays. Okay, that's what it is. And right. we were thinking about, you know, who we want to have, you know, to, to talk to that are 
major players, not necessarily musicians, but players and supporters of, of jazz in the community. And so um, I remember maybe it was the first little fundraiser or something we had, it was at Ortlieb's. Right. Um, so we were, we, you know, we uh, had to spend pretty much the first year um, getting everything organized, so the infrastructure of the whole organization, um, being clear what our mission was, which was to help our local jazz and it became jazz and blues musicians who are uh, in the greater Philadelphia area who are in crisis with no matter uh, what their issues were because as as diverse as the musicians were, there the, they needed assistance in uh, so many areas of their lives, medical, legal, um, home, you know, their homes, uh, even as far as getting rides to gigs, um, we were able to get help musicians get um, their instruments out of hock because they had to pay for, um, one had to pay for his granddaughter's uh, medical treatment and another musician, his, his mother died and he needed money for the funeral. And what happened was that, so he hocked his instrument and we were able to get it out of hock, you know, and pay for them. So, so they had their instruments back. I mean, there's so many different things, different legal issues, medical issues, <laughs> dental issues. So um, whatever the needs were, that's what we wanted to, that's what we wanted to do. Let me ask you something. Um, mm -hmm. Did you realize at the time we were sitting at the um, T, uh, mm -hmm. TGIF on uh, yeah. City Line City Avenue yeah. when I said, do you want to do this? Did you realize at the time how hard it would be? No. <laughs> when you when you're trying to do a not create a nonprofit, you know there are all kinds of legal things that you have to handle, and um, was it uh, uh, lawyers for the arts, volunteer lawyers for the arts? We contacted, we we did some research to see who's out there, and they helped us with uh, getting our five hundred one c three from the state and uh, as a non charity, you know nonprofit charity organization. Um, and then we started reaching out to members of the community to see what else. We had a meeting at my house in my dining room, as a matter of fact, and um, people were offering, you know, diff the different opinions. Some people were musicians, some people were not. They they were people who loved jazz music, but they had maybe a professional background that would be very helpful to the organization. So, um, you know, so out of that, we had a very diverse board and uh, we and that was our plan because we wanted to you know it, it was we wanted to make sure that we included everybody regardless of race gender you know ethnic groups all, all kinds of backgrounds and we wanted some business people because we god forbid we're musicians <laughs> we don't know anything about business right, right? <laughs> so um you know so we we had musicians and we wanted the organization to be the, the a, un, um, a uniting organization that unites and, and celebrates the diversity of all the musicians um, of the Philadelphia, greater Philadelphia jazz area and um, jazz. And then later we uh, included blues. Musicians and I remember, well. I remember our first board um, after that meeting that we finally got together was Pete Souter, Mm -hmm. from Ortlitz, who donated his place to have one of our meetings. Um, Leon Mitchell and mm -hmm. Elegant, right? And mm -hmm. Jim Miller. Um, now I'm drawing a blank. Who else? Mike, Michael Boone. Oh, Mike, Mike Boone. Boone. Mike, Mike Boone. Um, and and uh, Sue, Sue Ford was, I don't know if she was at the first meeting, but she, she came She, she was at the first meeting. Yeah. And then at one meeting with the lawyer. Mm -hmm. And then, unfortunately, she died soon after that, you know, so, um, but uh, we considered everybody who was at the Ortliebs, the first, you know, open, when we opened up the organization for everybody to come and see and help if you want or find out what it's about. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we considered all those people founders. Remember mm -hmm. that, Wendy? Yeah, like, yes. Mm -hmm. You know, so Zan Gardner was there and mm -hmm. uh, all these singers were there and people that really just showed up. I don't know if it was for the free food or <laughs> it was hard leaves, but, uh, you know, it was, uh, I, Kim, I think you were there that, that day. Yes, I was. I yeah, was. yeah. So we just considered, oh, you're all co-founders, you know, but um, <laughs> uh, yeah. And it can tell me, Wendy, uh, what was mm -hmm. the, um, I know you and I had some real, 
heart to heart talks at times over the years because well, yeah. tell tell me there, about that. Well, there were there are issues. First of all, we wanted to make sure that um, that that the, the musicians felt comfortable because we were not going to seek people out. We were going to be there for people who needed us, and a lot of musicians. Uh, and perform musicians, I'm including singers in that also as well right now, um, you know, they're too shy or too private or too proud to ask for assistance. And so uh, we said, we finally said, well, you know, if you know of anybody who needs help, get them to contact us, you know, or we, or sometimes we just ended up, we found out who these people were who were in need and we would call them. And the thing is, um, you know, uh, a lot of a lot of non non musicians, people, the audiences have been wonderful. Um, you know, the the jazz fans have been wonderful, and we had to dispel a few myths uh, because some people think that when when people are performing on stage, hey, you look good, you're sounding good, you know, and all that, and hey, they go home and they're you know they must be happy making a lot of money. It doesn't happen that way, you know. And <laughs> as soon as the state spotlight is is off. You know, a lot of people go home and maybe they can't afford, they have to make decisions. Am I going to pay my rent or am I going to put gas in my car? Am I going to buy food or am I going to pay, you know, my rent or pay a medical bill? You know, so um, we we asked a lot of people and, and we had to dispel that myth and let people know that there is a big need, you know, for people. And Kim, I know as executive director now too, that, you know, the people that you're helping now are you know all very proud and there's so much need you know and that's um, what we started the neighborhood <laughs> concerts for was to make audiences aware constantly right. that these these aren't just like music machines in front of you on right. stage or in the club they're real people with real problems and real needs and right. and that's sort of yeah and we didn't start with any money you know as a matter of fact <laughs> those of us we we i'm you know for years i i worked without it, you know, it was a total volunteer. No one was getting paid. You, we all fact, did for years. Right, for years. And, um, you know, finally grants were written and accepted. And then we said, let's, how else can we help musicians? Uh, let's, let's give them places to play and have them earn, you know, earn, earn money as well. And that's when we started the Jazz Bridge Concert Series. How many years has it been now? I don't know. Well, we we started it actually in 2004 is when we actually met with a lawyer and sent it off to the to the, you know, the federal government to get our 501c3. So now it's uh, who can do math? Kevin, was... you're good at math. <laughs> <laughs> We're 16 We're, uh, years, 17 years, going on 17 years. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Wendy. No, I so. You know, so we we tried every. You know, we had T-shirts printed up, and you know, we as we got some money, you know, to to help with the uh, with the organization to function as well as helping the the uh, musicians in in need. Um, so uh, we we sold calendars, we made T-shirts. You know, we we helped to generate income that way you know for us to use and the and jam sessions at the clef club yeah all the musicians who turned out gave us some <clears throat> spending money that you know we didn't have uh mm -hmm. right away so, which was very helpful the whole community was really in, uh, oh. invested in the in the mm -hmm. organization yeah you know and uh, so um and i think we had you know have a good reputation because word gets around, hey, listen, they really helped me do this. You know, um, so some people are private and we don't let people know unless they say, you know, give permission, you know, <laughs> well, so-and-so, you know, um, we helped them with teeth. We got a, a dental grant and um, that was great because a lot of, a lot of musicians need yeah, Definitely. a smile. <laughs> That's yeah. right, that smile. <laughs> and especially the, the horn players, you know, they yeah. got to get that embouchure together, you know. Yes. So um, so we, we we did a lot of work and and, and have fun fundraisers as well, you know, and uh, it, it, it was, it was, it's great because we, I, I just was so, um, I was not, uh, I was just so impressed that uh, at all the the legendary musicians that came on board and you know performed 
And um, some of them were in need, you know, again, just because someone is famous doesn't necessarily mean that they're making a lot of money, you know. And so they, um, it, I, I really enjoy it because I get to meet and hear fantastic music at the concerts that we, that we do, so. Right. I remember when uh, we were um, fundraising for uh, Charlie Rice, who mm -hmm. got himself into trouble. And I'm not telling any tales out of school. Right. Because right. Charlie was very open about it. I, I, from the time I got the phone call, <clears throat> hi, Sue, I, I think I'm being indicted. You know, and I went, <laughs> what? And at that time, he was like 88 years old. Mm -hmm. And um, and we we really, we had, we had to raise the lawyer. I got this great mob criminal lawyer for him. <laughs> and uh, he was terrific. And he was doing it a little bit, not as expensive as he would have been if it had been one of the, you know, chicken man tester or something. But um, mm -hmm. he, uh, he, uh, we had to raise a lot of money for that. And mm -hmm. we had a, uh, a big jam session at Ortlieb's. And I remember Boosie and Sam, Sam Reed were, were, were the big people on the, on the bill. And, uh, Sam's up there playing and Charlie's playing the drums and I get this phone call and it's uh, it's Bootsy. And I said, uh, where are you, Bootsy? He says, well, I'm right out front in my car and I'm not coming in because my sciatic is terrible, but I just wanted to know you to know that I was here. So, <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> so but we did it. I mean, uh, he was... Uh, Charlie got his reputation back, and uh, which had never been taken away in the first place. Right. But it's amazing the power that an organization like Jazzbridge has to help people, even not necessarily with money, but just with the power of the organization behind somebody that needs help. And uh, from um, well, for, let me let me turn to Kevin. Well, no, let me turn to. Um, to Kim now, uh, Kim mm -hmm. is uh, Kim Tucker has been with the organization as a volunteer. Then she was program director for the uh, neighborhood concerts. I think you still are doing that, and uh, but now she's uh, executive director. And uh, tell me what what you guys are doing now, and what kind of uh, changes you've made, or well, we haven't veered off course too much. We wanted to really build on the foundation that you and Wendy started and everyone in the original board. That was important to us. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanna, you know, build a couple of floors, add a few windows here and there, you know, make, the, make it look good. Um, one of the things we're doing, we're still uh, doing our advocacy, meaning helping musicians. We get referrals through um, Everyday Joe or another musician will reach out to us and say, hey, you know, this guy over here is having trouble with his car. Guy wants to hold it hostage. Can you guys intervene? <laughs> we, we had that recently. Oh. Um, <laughs> yes. I mean, the guy took his car. He had some health issues. And the mechanic was like, I can't fix it unless I get paid up front. So I spoke with the guy and I said, I need to know how much this is. You know, can I just give you something to at least get started? Because the guy needs his car. And then we'll, you know, pay the balance. And the guy whittled down his bill, which was great. Um, and so, you know, we sent the money off and the mechanic called me and said, we got the check. We'll begin working on the car. And the donor was so happy. He says, I got my life back. I can do what I need to do. I've been so depressed about this. You know, God bless you all. God bless Jazz Bridge. You know, um, we've had that happen twice where one guy had a car problem, hit a deer or something, his, thought his car was going to be totaled. It wasn't. But the mechanic was willing to work with us. And he said, this is what I need. Um, and we'll give the man the car back. And the guy said, put me on blast. I'll be glad for people to know what's going on. Right. And, and we do. We, we try to do things as you guys did with dignity. You know, I don't necessarily say to a person, you know, can we talk about this? You know, I will say, you know, is it okay if we share this? And if not, it's fine. Right. It's fine. We never want to make people uncomfortable. Right. You know, so we're grateful to that um, stuff that we have coming up, um, which is really great. Um, the neighborhood concerts, of course, will start again in the fall, um, specifically, especially with Collingswood, which is your baby, Suzanne. I believe you. I believe you started that before. That was the first even, one. 
Yeah, you, yeah. but didn't you start that before there was actually a jazz branch? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I started yeah. that like two years prior. Mm -hmm. Jazz in the wood, right? Jazz yeah, in the jazz wood. Jazz in the wood. Jazz right. in the wood. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 And um, we're we're partnering with Councilman Curtis Jones with the um, Center City District. Uh, we've partnered with the Office of Arts and Creative Economy. I always get that messed up. Um, so Me we've been partnering <laughs> with them. Um, this was the first year they invited us to do something different for Jazz Appreciation Month, and that was to present three concerts, two indoors, one outside for the month of April. Um, they gave us a, a great budget and we had some wonderful talent, uh, Byron Landham group, Tim Bray group, Gerald Veasley actually participated. These events were free and they were in areas um, that we didn't normally go into. So that was a, a blessing to be able to do that. And, um, you know, we're just looking to get into more neighborhoods, get you know, the ability to help more musicians and um, book some different groups, including touching on the, say, 25 to 40 year old. They don't like the word millennial. So that's what I'm just saying. <laughs> 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 you know, But, you know, they have so much energy, so much original music that they want to share and being able to tap in that and giving them a new audience, exposing the audience to this up and coming group or groups is what we're, we're doing now. Uh, now how, be, can I ask you this? Uh, can, mm -hmm. Now, uh, there are going to be some musicians uh, watching this and uh, who uh, might want to get a neighborhood concert gig. How do they do that? You need to reach out to me uh, or one of the hosts, you know, uh, Dave Posmentier heads up Shelton Ham. Uh, Kevin Johnson has been the host for Collingswood after a certain person retired. Uh, from her position and um going forward um you know just reach out to me i'll look at what they have what we try to remind the musicians is we need original compositions people would love to hear what they created and i've had musicians say to me well i don't really have anything i said but does anybody in your band have original compositions right you know and so we'll feature that you know, and we still try to keep it cost effective to our patrons. Even post COVID, it's been really different to have to pivot. Um, yeah. You know, smaller audiences, the venues are saying we can only allow X amount of people to come in. Right. So we've, and we've even gone online with, uh, you know, virtual concerts or using Eventbrite to do advanced ticket sales. Right. You know, anything to say we've got 50 or 60 people coming out tonight. Uh, we've even had instances where people purchased tickets and didn't show up. Some have reached out to get a refund and others is like, that's my donation. Yeah. So we're grateful when that happens. Yeah. We really are. And I'd like to say about the concerts, they are concerts. It's not yes. that you're going to hear material that you hear in any jazz club, you know, no, the standards right. no. and stuff. That's why it's important to, to have the original material and and the um audi the audience are not s sitting eating drinking talking they're listening and um they're th usually thoroughly engaged you know yes. with what with the it, what it is and i think a lot of musicians are surprised wow they really you know like my stuff you, you know mm -hmm. and, uh so it, it's not just it's just not a gig it's a special it's a concert you know, yeah, for, I mean, for jazz lovers, you know, right? it truly is. I mean, recently we had um, percussionist Joey Harrison, mm -hmm. and he brought a group with some very talented musicians. He was surprised when he walked into Sheltonham to see all of these people because, you know, I kept saying to him, <laughs> Oh, we've got advanced sales going. You'd be surprised. He said, well, I know I told my church and I told some of my family. And I actually had someone from Rattle Park, they bring like 12 to 13 people. And Ellen is in, she's older. Let's just leave it that. And, <laughs> uh, but one of the women that was with her is 98 years old. And she said she so looks forward to the concert. She was glad Ellen does a flyer and everything to let people know. They have a bus that brings them. And they <laughs> said, Joey was amazing. The music was mm -hmm. fantastic. Yes. And just to get that feedback, you know, um, Kevin was able to book Last year, the year before, uh, before COVID, um, Josh Lee and his family band, 
they're all between 25 and 40. Um, he does some of the old music of the 30s, 40s, and 50s. They have a vocalist, usually Chelsea Reed, and the audience was surprised that these this younger audience had embraced the music that some of them actually grew up with. Um, you know, but they they did things you know with a little a, a bit of a twist. I like to call it, you know, <laughs> standards with a twist. It was well received, well received. Well, since you're talking about Kevin, let's bring him uh, into the mix. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, Kevin. Now that t tell me um, now why you joined because I remember when you joined uh, the board and everything. And right. uh, tell tell me why you were interested and uh, what you're doing with the organization. And um, since you're vice president, uh, what kind are you guys making any um, administrative uh, changes? Are any of any of those things in the works? Okay, sure. So first of all, I'd like to thank you for having me here today. Um, it's my pleasure to be here. And Wendy, uh, who, I, who I love, so I thank both of you for starting Jazz Bridge, and I'm just so glad to be a part of something that you guys have started. Uh, as the vice president of uh, Jazz Bridge, you know, my duty is to assist Kim and to assist Renda, who is our, who is our president. And I oversee the uh, technology committee and um, Things that relate to technology is really where I lend my expertise the most. So any of the social media uh, that's out there, the email that's out there, the website, those are the things that I kind of deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. So every day I'm doing something with JazzBridge. So whether it's a post, whether it's a story, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Instagram, there's not a day that goes by that my hands don't touch jazz. <laughs> literally, literally. Yeah. Well, that, that sounds very familiar to Wendy and I, believe me. <laughs> every day, 365. So I make right. sure that mm -hmm. we have something out there every day. There's a new story out there. There's a new post out there. I'm answering a DM. Um, there's um, messages that are coming to me all the time um, asking me, you know, to promote things. So we not only promote our events, but a lot of musicians come to us and ask us to help them promote their event. And that's what Jazz Bridge is all about. So we're not just uh, looking at, you know, our little piece, but we're trying to, you know, expand the entire Philadelphia jazz community. So if a jazz musician is having a gig, uh, there's nothing for them to send me their flyer and say, can you post this? And of course we post it, uh, whether that be on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, what have you. Uh, so, you know, we enjoy doing that and we enjoy helping out the uh, other musicians. And the, you know, the, one of the other things that we're trying to do is we're trying to expand the board. So as people are listening to this, uh, we're looking to expand the board. We need additional board members. Um, now, what, kind, what do you need? Do you need more musicians or more? Um... We would like to have both. Um, so we need more musicians on the board and we'd also like to have more people with uh, various expertise. Um, so if there's um, somebody like else raising that has- money. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. 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 Fundraisers. Yeah. Yeah. Fundraising, Fundraising money. especially. Yeah, so, you know, our grants. latest board member is uh, Kevin Valentine. He just joined the board last month. So mm -hmm. we're happy to have another musician on the board. And he is a, uh, an attorney as well. That's so good. Some of the, um, the client services things that we do in the real estate space, Kevin is going to fit in just great. Oh, and wonderful. He's, and he's also going to be uh, helping us this summer with some hosting of some concerts and things like that. So, but that's one of the things that we're looking to do is to expand the board and to, um, you know, stop... I guess, reaching out to the same people to do everything. So yeah. right. there, there, there's definitely is a need to, to what do they say? Um, many Share the wealth. Many, <laughs> yes. yes. So we definitely need that. So that's one of the things that we're looking to do uh, in the upcoming near future. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, now let me, uh, let me put, um, Lex, uh, Lex uh, Simakis is uh, our tech and he's been our tech since we started. Lex, can you put up... Uh, the um the 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 jazz bridge calendar slide that i gave you all right all right uh why don't you talk about the calendar i mean i can start you out kim because yes. the idea for the calendar came from my mentor eddie green because he got into photography toward the end of his life and he always dreamed of putting together a calendar so one of the first things i did after Eddie passed, unfortunately, was uh, I took his idea and uh, made it part of Jazz Bridge's uh, um, one of the things we did every year. So 
Tell me, Kim, I know Kim's been doing the calendar for the last, what, five years, six years, something like that? Yeah, you, you left the organization. You retired in 2018, and you brought me on board, I want to say, in 2016, just to get an idea of how you do the calendar, what's involved, how to reach out to the musicians, getting their quotes and photos and things, and working with our graphic designer, Kathy Riddle, who's also a bass player married to a piano player, um, <laughs> Jim Riddle. So we're grateful to her also. And I've stayed on top of the calendar since then. And it's been a, a labor of love. There have been times when it's not been the labor of love. But, uh, <laughs> but it, it's funny. When I, I look at this particular calendar for 2021, it's Clifford Adams, the trombonist that we know from Cool and the Gang, grew up in Trenton, has played with some of the amazing towns like, you know, Tommy Grace, um, you know, uh, um, Bill Lacey and several others. Um, then there's also Bootsy Barnes is in this photograph. And this was at the old Mill Creek. who used to put on a lot of shows back in the day down in West Philly. Um, but the young man at the bottom is Ravi. And that was Cliff Adams' son. And That's a great I, photo. Yeah, yes. really great. Yeah, sadly, though, we lost, lost Cliff, you know, several years ago, and Jazz Bridge did help him. Yes. Uh, we, we lost Bootsy in 2020, um, on April 22nd, to COVID. And also, sadly, Ravi left us in 2021. So, really? Um, yes, I was in touch with him on social media, and um, his brother let me know that Ravi passed away suddenly. Oh. Um, so this picture... Um, is very special to me. Bruce Turner actually took this photograph at Mill Creek and mm -hmm. I'd reached out to him. And when I saw this, I knew I wanted this to be on the calendar. Robbie was alive at the time the calendar came out and, and then, you know, he wasn't. So it's was kind of bittersweet. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, this year we had Butch Ballard on the cover of the calendar. And sadly, um, one of the last communications I had was with Doc Gibbs. Uh, to put him in the calendar for the month of November. And we lost him to prostate cancer in September of 2021. So not knowing that he was ill, he was sending quotes, sending me emails and text messages to be included in the calendar. So, you know, while it benefits musicians, as Wendy spoke to, we just never know what's going on in their personal lives unless they choose to share it. Right. Uh, or, you know, um, which is, is heartbreaking to see someone get to the point where they don't know who they could turn to or they don't know who they could share with. There's trust factors involved. And, um, you know, we keep saying to people, we don't want you to suffer quietly. We are here. You know, we won't tell your story unless you give us permission. But again, people have their pride and it's just it's just a hard road to navigate. Mm -hmm. I want to let everybody know that that you you what time of the year do these usually come out? Like in December, like around um, well, Thanksgiving. Been, actually, we try to we get the calendar in October so that we can have it ready for the first concert in November at Sheltonham. Okay, so this is a this was always a a very good uh, community oriented. Uh, tool that uh, we we had going for Jazz Bridge, and it also brought in some needed money for the organization. And it's yes. also, I mean, I'm I'm now doing Jazz Archives mm -hmm. uh, with uh, with Diane Turner at Temple University Blocks and Collection. And these pictures that you find, Bruce Turner, whatever pictures that you find from the other jazz musicians who show mm -hmm. you what they have in, in their memorabilia. These things are, it's a, all these calendars are a historical document too. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and it's very important to keep, uh, keep it in people's minds. Um, uh, and how much do they usually go for? They go for $20. And we've been trying to keep the cost down. Um, I don't have to do this, but personally, my Facebook birthday fundraiser in September, whatever money I raised from that, I actually donated to Jazz Bridge to help uh, get rid of some of the cost associated with the calendar. Uh, right. You know, the printing of it, you know, uh, what it goes into paying, you know, for uh, putting it all together. And so this yeah. way, more of the money that we actually get from people purchasing in it can actually go back to the musicians. 
um, as opposed to the cost of production and printing and all of that. And it's great that it comes out, you know, available in November because then we sell we sell them uh, as Christmas gifts. Because yes. I had I've had people come over to my house to pick them up so they can mail <laughs> them out to California to oh, Texas. Yeah. Or, you right. know, wherever, mm -hmm. because they, there are jazz lovers from Philly that are all over the country. You know, exactly. These, they, they make wonderful gifts. And it is, it's a documentary, you know, of, mm -hmm. um, of of the music, the jazz music and the musicians from the Philadelphia, greater Philadelphia area. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, a couple of years ago, before COVID, I got a, uh, I guess it was a phone call or an email from Jimmy Heath. And he said, I relocated from New York. Here's my new address. And I like two calendars. I said, sure, whatever you want. They're on their way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he you was know. always, yeah. Yeah. Now, well, let's. Um, but me... Before you move on, I wanted to point out that Craig McIver was on as the drummer yes. in that picture. Yes. And he's doing well. And I've seen him perform just a couple of weeks ago. Oh, so I forgot he was about the that. Other person in that photo. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love Craig. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay, good. Thank you for clarifying that. I forgot. Yes. <laughs> All right, um, Lex, why don't you put up the thing about the uh, the real book? And Kevin can talk, can speak to that. You got Lex? <laughs> there you go. All right, All right, Kevin, why don't you talk about uh, this project that you guys have been working on for years here? I think Kim <laughs> will be a better uh, spokesman for this. So she's been more uh, close to this. I'm going to turn it over to Kim for, for the yes. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> You know, this has been a labor of love for David Zabinski, a, a wonderfully talented composer, musician, who had this idea. He came to Suzanne with it almost 10 years ago. And um, there was the first edition. I think we printed 150 copies and it sold out. You know, and that was the end of it. But the idea was that there were more musicians with compositions that we really wanted to feature. And Suzanne just took that mantle and... We did some outreach. We all did, I think, at this point. Um, I'm happy to say that after COVID and everything we've been through, and it's been a lot of back and forth and some legal stuff we actually had to go through, um, the Temple University Press has reached out to us um, only in the last few months that they're finally now looking at fine-tuning anything. You know, we even got an email earlier this morning that I still needed to edit something or look something over. But we're just going to send up a little prayer. And uh, if all goes well, we hope to have an actual book this fall. Well, so, they're already um, advertising it, Kim. Yes. Temple yes. University. That's where I got this picture. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'd also like to say that the editors on the book, mm -hmm. um, besides uh, you um, and David, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was uh, Jim Jim Miller, Jim Miller. Was, yes. it was it was an incredible mm -hmm. editor, and of course Kathy Riddles worked her heart out on yes. it too. Yes, yes. So, our board um, member Alan Lewine, he's been uh, spending a lot of time on the real book, working with Temple. So Alan has been instrumental in helping move this along and mm -hmm. keeping the board apprised of uh, the progress. Good. I think it'll do well. I really do think yes. it will do well. Yes. Um, and it's something that's very special. I found out that this was coming out on the Temple University Press from the head of Temple Libraries. We were on a Zoom meeting and he said, oh, you have a book coming out. I go, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I think uh, yeah. All right, let's talk about... Uh, um, wait, can I just say, ask something? Sure. So, so this second edition, because the first edition sold mm -hmm. out. Um, the second ed edition is really going to contain songs from the first edition. Yeah, correct? only it's yes. doubled. It's doubled. Yes, it's doubled. It's doubled. Yeah. So, um, so if you if people out there are listening, you know, um, you know, you can get this book, and you'll have a huge collection of original compositions from musicians in this in this area, and uh, and plus plus more, you know, from uh, and some major ones. We got uh, Jim found a. Um, uh, uh, a Jimmy Merritt song that's one of his, uh, and I, I'm, I'm drawing blank on it now. And Jimmy Merritt um, didn't have a lead sheet necessarily because he said, it, well, it changed all the time and everything. Mm -hmm. And Jim Miller found a bassist who had written one out so he could play it. 
Oh, and wow. and I sh we showed it to Jimmy Merritt, and he said, yeah, this looks pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. uh, but I, we've got a song in there um, by Jimmy Heath, and, and some major people, Grover Washington, of course. Yeah, Bootsy and, Barnes. Bootsy yeah. Barnes. Hank Mobley. Yeah, Hank Mobley. That's right. Yes. Um, mm. So, and a lot of these we had, there was an awful lot of, and Kim will tell you, um, awful lot of paperwork, legalities we all had to jump through mm -hmm. to get these songs together. Yep. And, um, but, um, yeah, that's a great accomplishment. Now, let's talk about. Mm -hmm. well, I did, I did, I did want to add one more thing, Suzanne. Sure. Um, one of the things for any musician that is doing this, or, you know, watching us, I want you to understand, you know, we had one composition that was by Eddie Green, who, it was the composer, but Morris Bailey, Mo Bailey was the lyricist That's for the right. song. So in reality, when you go through, you know, um, putting this stuff on ASCAP or BMI or registering it, please understand that Eddie Green is the composer. Mo Bailey was the lyricist. They both get credit, mm -hmm. you know, and they would, if they were alive, they would get royalties, you know, once the book was out and, you know, it's a sticking point when you're dealing with people like Hal Leonard or anybody oh, yes. that has licensing that you can't just say, oh, well, I'm just going to take the music and remove the lyrics. You have right. to have them together and right. they both have to have the licensing and they have to be approved. And this was one of those compositions well after the fact that while we had permissions from Eddie, we still needed to get Mo's permission who had passed away. Right. But I had I was in relationship with his uh, daughter who was still living oh, good, good. down in Virginia. Yeah. And I sent her a permission slip, which she then gave us permission to include it in the book. So um, that you know, but it's it's something that, you know, we go through, um, you know, just to make sure that, uh, you know, it, it's all legal. OK, um, yeah. Put your put your video on. <laughs> there you go. I, I, I bought a new iPhone this morning, and so every now and again, I move my hand, and it, it just moves. Oh, <laughs> that's all right. We'll be editing it, you know. Okay. Another thing about the real book, and what, one of the things that was important to me, and you had mentioned this earlier, Kim, was the fact that uh, for the neighborhood concerts, you want people to do original music. They don't have mm -hmm. to do their own original music. How no. about using this book and doing Philadelphia music? Right. And yeah. uh, that way... Um, you know, you could really get uh, the compositions out there to to the world and uh, help the estates of these some of these musicians who could use some royalties. You know, yeah, uh, really, it makes a difference. Yeah, I mean, right, Mike, Boone, Mike, Mike Boone did an entire concert based off of Sid Simmons music with his right. band. Right. You know, he did that tribute or we had Don Collins, I think, put together something which was Eddie's music in Collingswood. Right. You know, with that band. So you're right. They can do other people's music, you know, and the book is a great resource for that. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, all right, uh, Lex, why don't you put up the uh, the concert schedule for um, Councilman Curtis's. Now, this is a great. Did you do this, uh, Kim, this far? Yeah, yes. Yes, I did. That looks so great. I love yeah. that that guy with that Miles pose. Yes. You, yes. Know? Well, you, kept, you kept mentioning me to use Canva more. So that's what I've been using. <laughs> <laughs> some great ideas on there yeah it looks wonderful and and if you want to put up the other side where so people can read that better lex there you go um yeah uh why don't you talk about this uh kim uh, or kevin either one of well who are um, these people so um councilman curtis jones uh it's part of the is has the fourth district in the center city of philadelphia and unbeknownst to us at the time, several years ago, he reached out to us to do a partnership to produce music for the summer. And Jeff Duberon was the host. We found out, at least I did, at one of the concerts, that Jeff was his brother-in-law. <laughs> and uh, yes. And every time Curtis came to host a concert, he would say, you know, it's Jeff's birthday. We have to sing happy birthday to him. Now, this is in the dead of summer, and Jeff's birthday is November 2nd. So we just, <laughs> so the audience just kind of played along because they didn't know. And um, 
But after we lost Jeff in 2019, Curtis reached out and said, I want to continue to do the summer concerts in Jeff's memory. And mm -hmm. so that's why we're involved each year to keep Jeff's legacy alive. And this year we were tasked to produce um, uh, 11 concerts for the councilman. He's going to host three. We're going to actually host eight wow. uh, as various parks uh, within the city in his district. And I'm happy to say that I'm not going to be at every one of them because it's just way too much. But, uh, you know, between Kevin Ballantyne or Carol Rogers, our board member, Kevin Johnson may step in. I know I've asked Wendy to you know, cover a couple and I'll do the rest. But I tried to look at musicians within our area, young and, and very well seasoned, um, to just have some diversity. We'll be at places like McMichael Park. Um, there's um, places we've been before, like Woodside Park on Conchahokan Road or Gorgas Park through the Friends of uh, uh, Gorgas Park up in Roxborough. There are some places out in uh, West Philadelphia, Hestonville uh, Playground, that type of thing. And we're bringing the music to a community that for some people saying is underserved, but the reality is they have a lot of families, they have a lot of seniors, um, they have a lot of minorities with everything that is going on in the world and especially in the city with gun violence and things, people need something happy, something to look forward to. And that's what these concerts do. They, and these are free, right? They're free. People just bring a chair, their own food, some friends. They hang out. It's from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Uh, the band does 45 minutes, takes a little break. Curtis will speak. I'll speak. Or whoever's hosting about Jazz Bridge. Uh, we have a professional sound there. Nicholas Steptoe does that for us. And it's just a great evening in the summer. And it begins June 30th with uh, Mike Boone's group. Um, he told me just the other day that he decided to mix things up. And he's actually got a guy he's bringing in that plays the steel drums. Ooh. And um, yes, and, and I love the steel drums. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it's going to be something different for, for the people in the neighborhood to see this. Um, one of the concerts we have is Callie Graver. Mm -hmm. She's a young vocalist. Um, she's up and coming. So I wanted to, to get her in there as well. Najwa Parkins is another one, a Temple alum. Chris Coral is also a Temple alum. I'm proud to say they were students that I had in my class when I taught at Temple. <laughs> and I've been in touch with them and followed them. And, you know, they're very talented. Um, now, let, you know, me so ask, let me ask, uh, hold on a second. Let me ask mm -hmm. Kevin. Now, Kevin, how are you? using your vast internet <laughs> talents um, to, um, you know, uh, do the PR for all these concerts. Right. So I can say that, you know, the first year that uh, we had these concerts, I was at every one. The second year, I was at every one. So I love these concerts. So uh, going out there and, um, you know, I've hosted many of them, but even the ones that I didn't host, I was always there. So, um, each one of these is uh, promoted on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, et cetera. And I'm also at all of these shows, taking photos and taking videos. And, you know, each one of these will have a, a, a good clip or two uh, from me, um, from the videos themselves. And, you know, Curtis Jones has been a, a great partner with Jazz Bridge. And, um, you know, these are concerts that I really like. I like them because they're in the neighborhood. So people that mm -hmm. normally can't come out, they can just go on their porch. Some of them just go right on their porch, especially like out in Triangle Park. Uh, there, people just go out on their, on their porch, and it's just it's a party, uh, right right there on their on their <laughs> steps, and it's, and it's great. And uh, you know, I bring my family out there. I saw Kim out there last year. I had my family come from um, um, from Virginia and all over. We all went out there. We had a picnic basket. We just sat on the on the grass, listened to some music. And uh, it doesn't get any better than that. Just to have mm -hmm. some fun out in the yeah. park, listening to good music with your family, no cost. It's, it's just a wonderful time. Mm -hmm. Well, Kevin, you're going to, since we both live in the same town, yes. I'm going to tap you on the shoulder and have you come over and show me how to really do Instagram well. Oh. I've been, <laughs> He's I've been very trying good at to it. do very it. Good. And I'm, He's very good. I'm terrible at it. So uh, <laughs> sure. you'll, you'll, get, you'll get a text from me, Kevin. All right. <laughs> Um, all right, now the next one, uh, what are we going to do? What do you have there, Lex? Ah, so we're getting toward the end here, folks. So we, al we, also, we also have some other things coming up as well. So we also partner with Hawthorne Park. 
I was going to oh, ask yeah. about that, yeah. Right. So we uh, have some concerts that are coming up there. Um, we have three Good. shows that are three shows over the summer. Uh, Kim has already mentioned Josh Lee. Josh Lee is going to be there uh, this summer as well. He's not only bringing the family, but he's bringing the extended family. Yes. So it's going to okay. be the, the big band that's going to be out there. At Hawthorne? Hawthorne. Yes, yeah, in Hawthorne. August. In August. Right. Okay. So, mm -hmm. um, now all this uh, is on. All this stuff is on your website, right? The, we're updating the, the we're updating the website. It's on social media, but we will be updating the website to include all of this. Okay, yes. okay. Yep. So uh, for, for everyone who's going to be, and I'm going to send this off to uh, Channel 64 immediately and get this up on our uh, YouTube channel. Um, hopefully, in time for all your concerts, guys. You know, because okay. I want you, I want you to have as many people out there as possible, and okay, I'll be out there that. for a, a okay. couple of them too. Yeah, um, and so let me just go. This is the Jazz Bridge uh, website, um, and it's very easy. Jazzbridge.org. Uh, here's Kim. I hope you don't mind, Kim. I, I don't. Her, uh, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Everyone knows how to find her anyway. Day. So yes, they do. <laughs> You cannot uh, so Kim Tucker's uh, email is up there, and that's that's primarily uh, if if you're a musician or a singer, uh, who's yeah, it must be a professional jazz musician or singer mm -hmm. in need and in crisis. And you give uh, Kim a uh, an email, and and she'll definitely work her heart out to help you um, over whatever crisis you happen to be involved in. Um, and of course, our website, phillyjazzhistory.org, is at the bottom. And we're, again, all about um, creating a, an archive for the Philadelphia jazz community uh, at large. We're talking about Atlantic City, Trenton, uh, up to Reading, down to Wilmington. Um, that's creating a history, not creating a history, but documenting the history, doc documenting the history of our fabulous community and everything that's happened. And I'm talking about the entire 20th century uh, and onward. So um, it's it's a very rich history that the city really hasn't taken, taken much interest in, but we're hoping um, that as time goes on, they will. And um, so, uh, Anything uh, else to add before I go to the last tile, guys? Wendy, you I, want to I enjoyed, say something? I enjoyed participating in um, yeah. the Philadelphia Jazz Legacies Parade. We had a great time out there. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> and yes, that's, that was fun. That was, was a blast. Wendy was there. That's right. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm going to try. I might. I might. I, I've already asked, um, oh, what's his name? The guy at the, what is it? The Office of the Creative Arts and... Arts. Yeah, I yeah. don't get that either. Yeah. Yes. Right. O-A-C-C-E. I'm going to see if they'll give us a truck next year so we can have a band. That was a lot of fun. We got to do it again. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, um, but no, it's I'm nice. just... Go ahead, Wendy. Uh, I was I was just going to say, so, I mean, you, you, you kind of mentioned it, but, you know, um, again, if you are a musician listening to this, uh, and and or you need something, or you know someone, please do not hesitate. That's how we get to help people. You know, yes. is do not hesitate to contact Kim at, at Jazzbridge because uh, through word of mouth or phone calls, whatever, you know, that's that's how things happen. That's how Jazzbridge does its magic. You know. Yeah, and the only thing I want musicians to understand is this is all private. This is all confidential. Yes. And, you know, if you feel uncomfortable, you know, just understand we're not even sharing this. Even when we, you know, have to do grants and they ask us, we don't tell. No. What we will do is we'll give a, you know, a broad range demographic, you know, and that's kind of where we leave it. But what you tell us stays with us. And we have a committee, so not even the entire board knows. Mm -hmm. And we want it that way so that people can do this and not have to worry. Um, that, you know, as the, we say in the mission, do it with dignity. And that's what we want people to, to be comfortable with is knowing that we're doing this with dignity. Mm -hmm. And it's so meaningful that Kevin, uh, that you're working on this with everybody on the board and, and Kim, I'm so glad yeah. that Kim is executive <laughs> director now because she's, she's been so involved in the. It's in her blood. It's in yeah, your blood. I know. I know. You just, <laughs> that's right. You know. <laughs> She's been part of for a long time, so That's she knows right. it backwards and forwards. So I'm so glad right. she's 
she's executive director. Yeah. She'll be a good Thank one you. Uh, for Thank the, you. as long yeah. as, mm -hmm. oh, you're going to, you're going to be there for a long time. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, Kevin and Kim, for doing this, you know, taking it Appreciate on. Appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Because it's still so going. It's it's great, you know, um, from creating something small and from the beginning to see it keep growing and growing even after we leave, after, you know, Suzanne and I left, to keep mm -hmm. seeing it grow. That's just fantastic. So, yeah, again, yeah. We're, we're just trying to build on the foundation that you guys started. That's what's important. Mm -hmm. And it's needed. It's very much needed. Oh yeah. You know, it'll, so it, um, it always will be. It's yes. a shame, but it always will be. Yeah. I know. I know. All right. Now let's go to the Thank last you. tile. Um and uh this is the last thing. I, your tax deductible donations will help the community build the Philadelphia Jazz Archives that everyone can enjoy. And you can go donate on our uh in our website uh if you feel like it also contact me if you have any kind of um memorabilia you would like us to survey and that means you keep it but we just come over your house and take pictures of it so we know where everything is mm -hmm. and or if you have something you want to uh, to donate and uh, preserve everything that we uh, that's donated goes to the blocks and collection at temple that's where that's where our archive is going to live and uh, so we're slowly building it at um, a little bit at a time. We just got uh, Butch Ballard's memorabilia. And he, Great. He was a pack rap. Uh, yeah. rap. He really was. <laughs> I mean, boy, oh boy, his, uh, his family was so sweet. But, uh, and if you want to sign up for our newsletter, you can just go to our website and a little window will pop up and annoy you. But that's how you sign up for the newsletter <laughs> that I send out. But Susan, I want to I'm... thank everybody, Kevin Johnson and Wendy for stepping in at the last minute. And, uh, and of course, Kim Tucker, uh, thanks for doing this with us and uh, have a, have a wonderful night. And uh, it was great. Thank seeing you so much. Everybody. Yeah. Great thank to see you, you as well. Great thank you so everyone. much. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> take All care. Right, take thank care. You. All right. Good night. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a good night. You see too. You. Good night.